Welcome to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast, where we interview the biggest and most successful real estate entrepreneurs, investors, and capital raisers in the world to provide you with the tool sets, the mindsets, and the skill sets to help you conquer yourself, your life, your marriage, and use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle so that you can live a more successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and contribution. If what you're after is having it all, if what you desire is becoming the best version you can be across all areas, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sentimentally, and financially, you've come to the right place. We will bring to you the best of the best real estate entrepreneurs who will give you the insights, knowledge, experience, and skills so that you can go out and crush it financially and across all areas of your life. Grab pencil and paper, sit back, enjoy, and you are welcome to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. Hello, Modern Kings and Queens. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast, where we interview some of the best and most experienced real estate investors, capital raisers, operators, deal finders um, in the world to provide you with the tool sets, the mindset, and the skill sets for you to conquer yourself, your life, your marriage, and use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle so that you can have a more successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and contribution. Uh, super excited today because I have a modern queen, right? Mm-hmm. I have like four modern kings and one modern queen and it's i've been i've been keeping that pattern uh so super excited to get to talk to this amazing real estate investor but before i introduce her to you though i just want to ask every single one of you listening and 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 uh and watching for a favor i want to ask you that if if you get something out of the this interview if you get some type of value and insights if you learn a new skill if you get a mindset shift if you get a realization or maybe if you get some motivation or inspiration to go out and take some action and keep on moving forward towards your goals. I want to ask you to please share this episode with some of your friends. Share it with with uh with someone you think this might impact, someone who's interested in real estate, or just share it on on your on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on all of your social media. Because uh, if you help us share, you help us help other people. And uh, when you do that, well, all I have to say is thank you. And um, today I have Ra- Raquel. I'm Mexican, so I was about to say Raquel. Yeah, Raquel. <laughs> Raquel Atkins. She's a vibrant and personable multifamily real estate real, real estate investor. Raquel's uh, Raquel ch- channel her her passion for real estate into buying and managing uh, apartment buildings. Before buying and managing apartment buildings, she used to flip right homes, single family, and alongside a dedicated team of investors. Together with her team, she currently has around 500 doors, so over 500 units. As a general partner, uh, she's native from Brazil, and uh, uh, she developed her real estate investment firm from zero, and that propelled her to embark on a journey of educating and empowering minorities, women, and mom and moms to succeed using real estate as their wealth creation vehicle. So, um, Raquel, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate yeah. you, and you are welcome to the show. Yes, I'm so excited, Alex. When I when I found your podcast, I've been listening to a lot of your your episodes and I'm like I need to share my journey is is exactly what I love doing and since I discover real estate I it became my mission to let other people especially minorities especially moms you know because we are not the majority in this field to educate them and tell them about the ways that they can invest and create generational wealth for themselves yeah and and, and that's so important because um it's shocking right how many people uh don't know about this uh, about multifamily as a as a real estate investment vehicle right everyone has their money in 401ks ria rias yeah the stock market all of that and um and uh, like no one knows well not not no one right but it's 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 very common for people to not know about uh, multifamily as a as an as an, as an as an investment opportunity, right? So yeah, it's very important to tell people, educate, especially minorities and moms and women, right? And nurses, right? I I, I see that. Yes. I saw you were on an, on a on a podcast with yes, the medical cash flow nurse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, hello, modern kings and queens. I'm sorry for the interruption. I know you're enjoying the episode, but I have something super important that you must listen to. If you've been following this podcast for a while now, it's because of one of two reasons. Number one. You aspire to have it all, to unlock your potential across all areas of your life and achieve true freedom physically, emotionally, spiritually, sentimentally, and of course, financially. And or number two, you're a real estate investor 
or an aspiring real estate investor who has chosen to use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle to achieve financial freedom. My mission as part of the Modern Kings and Queens movement is to help as many people as I can achieve financial freedom using the vehicle of real estate. And I believe that networking can be an incredibly powerful tool to help you unlock your potential across all areas, but more importantly, financially, and more specifically in real estate. I believe that in real estate, your net worth is your network. This is why I created the four step capital racing networking system to help real estate investors propel their growth by using a reliable system that will consistently help them connect with their ideal investors, build trust, add value, get their investors to promote them and put them in front of more investors and raise more capital faster and in a much more effortless way so that they can become successful, not only financially, but across all areas of their life. If this is something that you want, and this is something that you're interested in, click the link below to gain access to a training that will explain the four steps to building a high leverage network that you can use to raise millions of dollars in capital, propel your growth in real estate, and achieve financial freedom in a much more effortless way so that you can have more time and energy to pour into every single other area of your life so that you can become successful, not only financially, but across all areas of your life. In this training, you will learn four things. Number one, aligned connections. I'll show you how to network effectively and how to make sure that your networking efforts work by leveraging a secret little known concept called the cloak track. Number two, networking tool. I'm gonna reveal to you a secret networking tool that the top 5% of successful real estate investors use to become successful. And I'm gonna show you how you can use it too to become successful and get out of that 95% of real estate investors that don't really make it. Three, high status communication. In order for someone to invest in you, they have to feel like they know you, like you, and trust you. A lot of people can communicate, but very few can connect. High status communication will allow you to build trust and add value in a way that will make people feel like they know you, like you, and trust you for years in a time span of 30 minutes. And lastly, the fourth thing is the attention multiplication machine. The world doesn't run on OYO anymore. It runs on attention. And this last thing, the attention multiplication machine, will show you how to get wealthy investors to promote you and put you in front of more wealthy investors so that you can raise more capital faster in a much more effortless way. So if this is something that interests you, click the link below to go watch the training. Make sure you stay all the way to the end. If you, if you find value and you want to book a call to talk about how you can get this completely offhand system, completely done for you system, implemented for you in the next five days. So click the link below. I'll see you on the other side. And I hope you enjoyed the rest of your episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Raquel, the first thing that I do with my guests is I ask them to walk us through their real estate investing journey in 75 seconds or less. Okay. Uh, and, and going back to, to not knowing, a lot of people not knowing, I think is like we have a lot of limited beliefs, you know, and a lot of us think that this is not something that is made for people like us. You know, that, yeah. that, that was my belief. You know, that's something that one of the first things that I had to change was my mindset to be to destroy any any kind of limitations that I put on myself. And and I think a lot of people think that this kind of investment world and real estate is not for for everyone, you know, it's just secluded for the privilege, you know, and, and I'm I'm here to let everyone know that it's not, you know. So my journey started as a flipping homes. I came from Brazil 10 years ago. My husband is is American and he he works in construction. So it was an easy transition to start flipping houses. He builds uh, commercial buildings and uh, we say, hey, why don't we start flipping houses? So we did this for a couple of years, made a good amount of money, but I was rich in cash, but asset poor. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if, if I stop working, if I stop flipping, I'm, I don't make any more money, but it's, everything is a, is a journey and everything is a lesson, you know? So you learn a lot either way, either way you start. So we, we transitioned really quickly to trying to find something that was more of a creating generational wealth, especially after having kids. So we came across multifamily buying apartment complexes, which was the same thing as flipping houses but flipping apartment complexes. We buy apartment complexes that needs a little bit of fixing. Sometimes it's just a management issue. You know, sometimes it is the structure and you need to make it prettier and make 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 it nicer. And then you raise the rent. And then, so I, I pay for a mastermind 
and dedicated for the past year just raising capital and uh, uh, fixing apartment complexes and creating generational wealth for my investors and myself. Mm, nice. So, um, so you were, uh, th there's something really, you know, like interesting that you mentioned, um, you were cash rich, but asset poor. Right? Yes. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question for you. Were you spending that cash or were you like saving it? It, it just poor? rolls right back to it. You know, it, yeah. it rolls oh, right back okay. to it. it. Yeah. It's just to it's the just investments. That, yeah. It just rolls back right back to the next investment and we could buy a car, but then I was like, all I'm doing is spending cash that I'm getting. So it's pretty much like a W2 is a, is a job, you know, it's, it's flipping housing for me felt like a job. I flip houses, I get more money and then I spend it on a car or on a trip or getting my life a little bit better. And then after reading, they reach that poor dad, I'm like, this is not really the, the way that I'm truly going to achieve. I am in the, in the, in the real estate invest investment world, but mm -hmm. it's not the vehicle that I want to use to build generational wealth because what can I pass it on to my kids flipping houses? just a fund or some kind of trust with a bunch of money in there that they can just burn if they are not responsible. So I wanted to create something that I can leave an asset that generates cash flow for them instead of material things or man money and some kind of trust for them to have it when they're older. So the best way that I found that was through multifamily. So my goal is to have to build some assets, some multifamily complexes that I can leave it to each one of my kids as a 10,000, 20,000 uh, asset is cash flowing monthly for the rest of the life or for whatever they want to uh, manage it for. Yeah, that yeah. was my goal. And I can do that with flipping. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't yeah. do that. So, so, yeah, it's like a job. If you stop, everything stops, right? But with, exactly. with multifamily, yeah. yes. you can stop exactly. and then everything keeps on going, right? Exactly. Which is the, you have the, a team the... managing, you know, you have your property management and you truly, you you are like the head of everything, like an asset manager. You have to manage everyone involved, but it's not as physical and as, as heavy involvement as a flipping. And most of the times, sometimes our crew would uh, flake on us. And that was me and my husband flipping the house underneath the house. On the, that was the last flip that we did. And I was like, this is enough. It was a nightmare of a flip and everything went wrong with it. And all of our crew just flake on us. It was in summertime. I, it, sorry, not summer. It was Christmas time. So everyone just kind of tapped out of working. And we were there in freezing weather underneath the house because all of the, the pipes burst underneath the house. And I was like, this is not what I want to do. Yes, we got a 70,000 check at the end of it. But I was like, it, it wasn't worth it. And, and, and I was burned out. And and then another 50,000 goes to the next one until it gets paid again. So I never felt like I was building generational wealth, which was yeah. my goal. Mm. So, um, well, before I, I ask what I want to ask, um, I hope I don't forget. Well, I, I'm not, but have you, so, you, so, so, you, so you're originally from Brazil. Have you yes. always spoke such well, such good English? No, <laughs> no. I, really? My my family moved from Brazil to Spain in 1999. I was I was 13 years old, so I was basically raised in Spain, and then we went back to Brazil five no sorry 10 11 years ago, and I couldn't adjust anymore uh, being back in Brazil. I was just a foreigner in my own country, you know. And then my sister yeah married and came to the U.S. and then we were just thought that would be the, the best thing for us to come here to. And I met my husband pretty quickly when I came here. He said that he got me fresh off the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't come in a boat, but yeah. So we just stay. But I, I used to always love um, music and uh, I was always kind of like translating the songs. I learned English through songs, really, mm, you know, and then, okay. yeah, and trying to speak. I was like, I, I'm not shy of trying to speak. I think that's what helped me the most. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So um, yeah. I four years ago I couldn't speak like a word in in, in English. Right. I, I, wow. I, I, I four years. That's awesome. I couldn't speak more than three words without choking. Uh, what has <laughs> been what has helped me is number one, not being shy about yeah, sucking. You just have to right? talk. Yeah. Yeah. So not being shy, like you said. Um, and then the second thing has been just like doing this. Right. I've I've, I've done over nice. two hundred and fifty of these interviews with with high level people. Um, so I, th I've just had to bring up my 
my English level up, right? Yes. Um, and us, uh, and us as an immigrant, that was one of my biggest barriers when I started was how people gonna trust me with my accent and with yeah. my accent and, and my English not being a native English. All of those things used to be in the back of my mind every time that I spoke mm -hmm. to one of my high level investors. You know, like how am I gonna make them believe that I'm gonna truly double their money like I'm promising, you know? So yeah. you have to just embrace who you are and just just embrace who you are, really. Yeah, and then you you realize that all of those, you know, uh, head- Yeah, clock, limited beliefs, yeah. Exactly, was yeah. stories, right? Stories. Yeah, it's just not it's not true. And, and if people trust you and know who you are and know your true self, it doesn't really matter, you know? that they, they don't really care about, I don't care, you know? If I meet someone, that I really trust and like. I don't really care how they look or how they talk or if they're moms or, or or older or younger, you know, like I just need to trust what they do and they need to prove to me that they know what, are, what they're talking about, you know? So mm -hmm. it's it's just a limited belief in your mind that you have to, to come across, especially being like us, you know, minorities and, and this world of investment is not, it's not made of a lot of people like us. So yeah. you think that it is because of all of these things that you think that it is, but it's not, you know, like it's just, it just needs more people needs to know about it and more people needs to educate themselves and just go for it too. It's not because of your accent. Yeah. It's not because you're a mom or you're an immigrant. It's just, you need to know what you're doing, you know, exactly, like everything yeah. else. Yeah. So if you are, uh, you know, anybody wa watching or listening, if you are a woman or if you are a man that comes from another country, Mexican, I'm Mexican, right? Or from <laughs> wherever, um, that's not a, a determining factor whether or not you can it's be not. successful in, in real estate exactly. or in, in any other field, right? Exactly. Um, and actually right now with the internet and all of this stuff has become more tolerable, I think. Yes, that's word, yes. And, right? and, 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 and that's why I want to be talking and, exactly. and, and, and on podcasts, on, on the internet. Sharing. Because then, you see people like yourself, you know, I, re I remember when I started, I went to conferences and I look around, I'm like, no one looks like me. There <laughs> is like probably three ladies and 400 men in, in, in white business suits, you know? So I was like, I, I don't belong here, you know? So then the more I talk and the more people see that, oh, she's just like me or she, I can't relate so much to her. So it's not, so it will slowly become more and and i want to be the voice to people it's like if i got here where i am today you can do it too you know like anyone yeah. can do it too and this is the ways that i did it and this is the the things that i that i the chances that i took to be here so if mm -hmm. you do the same you can be anywhere so raquel so one of the important things for you um that made you make the switch from flipping single family homes into now investing in multifamily, right, is it was building relation, building generational, generational wealth. wealth. Yes. And one of the important things about building uh, generational wealth is um, living something to your kids, something that will be yes. generating cash flow for them without them having to worry about it until they're able to manage it. If that's something they, they decide they want to do or exactly. for them to have a stable base and be able to do something else. Right. And for them mm -hmm. to not struggle as much as maybe you have been, exactly. you have had to. Right. Exactly. Um, so with that, I, I'm just like curious about something, right? Um, like all of the successful stories about entrepreneurs who made it, you know, like every single story is like I came from the bottom, right? I had to like uh, climb my way up. I struggled. I slept on the floor. I slept on my office building. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything to eat for like three days, and and now I'm here. I made it. Right? Like every single speaker, every single motivational speaker or coach or whatever has that type of story. Uh, and I was thinking the other day, right? I was talking to a very wise, gentle, modern king, and um, and he 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 was telling me how he's never heard a motivational speaker who who stands in who's who's young, who's successful, who's Jack, has an amazing family, has an amazing business, uh, is very young and, and stands on stage saying, "My my dad, was you easy. know, yeah, yeah, my dad was successful. I used his success and all of the resources and the tools and the knowledge to get here in like a year." Mm -hmm. right and i yes. didn't struggle right now i want to help all of you so like that's not that's not common i mean i don't know i yes. don't know if it, if it even that exists. is a problem that i'm gonna have in the future and it's always in the back of my mind for how am i gonna raise strong human beings that knows that the struggle is not there to teach them the hardships of life like myself 
we are yeah. immigrants. It's like just just coming to a new country alone is a whole is a whole level of struggle by itself, you know. For and sure. uh, and I did it twice. I went to Spain and then I I, I came here. So I I know that that's going to be a struggle. But what I think in the back of my mind is I don't want them to have the struggle of financial, financial struggle, like having to know that they don't have money for certain things. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to work hard for things, you know. So that's something that I'm I'm really <laughs> struggling and trying to talk to financial advisors and uh, trust funds and, and all of this uh, administrators to let to let me know or to structure somehow that they do have that money but somehow don't know that they have that money and uh, they need to I earn it to or get, something right? exactly they have to earn it and uh, there is very limited amount of access that they have to that fund with the assets that i that i hopefully be able to give them to them and as well as i want to raise them i, I think it's going to be a lot on the way that we raise them yeah. to be able to know that okay i don't have that struggle so I'm going to use my privilege to help others. So that's my main goal for them is for them to choose to do whatever they want. And that means give back to people, give back to society, to choose a life of a purpose with, with some kind of uh, bigger goal to help others. You know, so mm -hmm. that can be anything. So that it, they I want them to be free to choose to do something good back to the world because they already have such a leg up in life. You know, so wish me luck. Maybe we have to yeah, do this yeah, interview yeah. again in 10 years yeah, and I'll let you know yeah. how, how it's going. Because I have but, a daughter yeah. as well. But for sure, right. one thing, they don't know about it. They're not going to uh -huh. get it all the way in all the time and all at once. They have very limited uh, access to it. And it's going to be a lot of uh, raising them to know that even though financial is not an issue, you need to give back to the world because you had such a leg up, you know? Yeah. Wish me luck on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. God bless. No, 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 no. I don't think there's such a thing as luck, in my opinion. But God bless you with wisdom, discernment, and amplitude of exactly. heart and love, so that you exactly. could, so that you could take good decisions and have the strength that you need to be able to lead your children well. Okay. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. I'm worried about that as well. Because yeah. <laughs> what's coming is that if you, if a parent builds wealth, then the kids grow up to be like a fucking mess. Right. Exactly. They don't That's my appreciate anything. Fear. They or don't appreciate burn it anything. All out, you know? Yeah, yeah. They, they don't know how to work, or 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 they don't have any. They don't want anything to do with the business that yes. the parents use to build wealth, right? They want to like exactly. paint or something, or do yoga yeah, or exactly. something like that. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and that's why like generational wealth like the, doesn't last, right? Because the, the next generation, for some reason, I don't know. Maybe they're so sick. Sick and tired that they saw mom and dad build wealth with this one vehicle. That by the time they grow up, they don't want to. They don't want anything to do with that one vehicle. I don't know. I don't know. But but, um, but for me, it's like it's my purpose. When I when I find out I was having kids, I wanted them to have the minimum. The minimum meaning uh, money for college, so that they're not starting a new profession with a hundred thousand on debt. So at least money for college, money for their first car, and a house. Mm -hmm. You know. So having these three things for me is already I I'm, I've done my job and raising them right to know what to do in life and choosing the right path. For me, these three things are necessary. The college not much because I'm an entrepreneur and I believe in life more than than, than the whole school system. But whatever they want to do for me to have the funds to to be able to have them so they don't have to struggle or find alternative ways to get that money to do the necessary things, the steps in life, you know. And then after that, it will be, I think, has to do a lot with how we raise them, you know? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of chunklers in the butt, for sure. <laughs> One problem that I, that I found, well, that I've, um, that I've came across is that uh, kids who come from, who, who, are, who are kids of parents who build, who build wealth are ashamed to say that, you know, I have it easy. Some are, exactly. For some reason. Some are. So that's why I think it's important not to tell them, you know? Not to know that you have all of this money and this asset that is just paying for everything and I don't have to, you know. So it's very important somehow. I, I don't know how it's hard. Go, it's it, hard. It's very hard, my friend. And I let me share another thing with you. Let me share point. another thing with you. So uh there's like four levels of consciousness, right? Like uh that I, I read a book about some spiritual spirituality guy and 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 uh quantum physics and all of that. He distilled all of the different levels of consciousness into four. The first one is like victimhood, right? Like <laughs> which where 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 which is, that's the the level of consciousness that most of the most people have, right? Like they they think that 
life happens to them and every, every, the world is against them and mm. everything is hard, right? The second level of consciousness is when you take responsibility and, and, um, and now you're like, well, everything that happens will happen for me, right? Mm -hmm. So that's like egocentric a level of consciousness, right? Like you work really hard, things happen for you. And the third level of consciousness is when everything happens through you, right? When doors open before you even touch the knob and right? with opportunities come your way without you even having to ask. And they turn out to be aligned with, 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 with what you're, where you're going. And then the fourth level of consciousness is oneness, right? That's like where, where Jesus operated from. Um, so, um, so I think, so because yesterday actually, I had a, a talk with my neighbor, how like my neighbor has uh, houses and she was able to build some wealth, but her daughter decided to like struggle, get a degree and then struggle and then get another degree and then struggle and get another degree mm -hmm. so that she could come back and say, I did this all for myself. Yes. Right? And then, and I then, see. and then it's crazy. Like, holy shit. Like she was there. Her daughter was there. And then she was like, if my mother, my father, my, um, if, if my mother wasn't here, my father wasn't here and this wasn't there and this wasn't there, I would be this because of me. Like, that, yeah. that's all. Right? I see. It's all, all depends on personality and, and self pride as well and a lot of ego. And that's fine. That's fine. But at it's least fine. us yeah. as parents know that it wasn't because we didn't have it to give it to them. You mm -hmm. know, and, exactly. And yeah. Exactly. It was. It wasn't because of me. And 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 I want them more to have like like for example, in my family, we I grew up with my dad being a horrible entrepreneur, just just horrible with money altogether, but an amazing inventor and creator, right? And I'm like, why is he not a very successful man to leave all of this legacy for us? You know. But he yeah. couldn't do the two things. And the other uh, example of entrepreneurship is my uncle. He is he bought a couple of chickens and started a, an egg factory, you know. And now he owns this multi-million uh, Brazilian money uh, industry uh, factory for food in general. He sells all kinds of food, you know. And, and it's amazing because he raised his kids and his grandkids now to have pride on what he built out of nothing and out of a very humble idea to go to school, get a, a, a college, uh, a business administration degree to work for, for the factory. And all of them did. All of the four kids, four, four of my, my cousins did. And now their, their, their sons and daughters are doing the same. And I don't know how he did. And next time I go to Brazil, I want to have a talk with him. And like, how did you build them to know that they had all this money and already a, a very successful business handed to them Mm -hmm. And still wanting to be part of it and continue the legacy of growing because I was watching a, a presentation for this big time financial advisor and he was saying that the statistics shows that the second generation uh, spends or destroyed 70% of what you leave them behind. The second generation, so my grandkids were just basically destroyed 70% and then by the third generation is actually 90%. There's nothing, yeah. It's like, wow, it's so scary. But but you can't really think about that long. And I'm, I'm just going as far as my kids, you know, if I can provide yeah. them. And not only, it doesn't go just to my kids. My my dream and my why goes beyond that too. It is one, to create generational wealth for my kid, but as well as financial freedom, like all of the good things that we look for, you know, freedom of time for me to be able to travel with them and to, to live the life that I want and not just material, but to be able to have the time and financial to give back, you know, some yeah. kind of, of, of charities here in the U S and back in my country and anywhere I want really, you know, just help my family and, and people in need and all of these things will be open through having financial freedom. Not only that, but as well as my partners, people that invest with me, my, my investors are, it comes right after my kids because if you trust your $100,000 savings, your lifetime savings with me on a deal, we're both going to grow together. We're both going to be financially free because in five years, I'm going to give you back probably $200,000 that you can invest another $1,000 and get another $200,000. So that, that's kind of like how I think. So my goal is to help 1,000 investors become financially free with me, you know, to get alongside me, but as well as my kids and give back to charity. So there's a bigger picture than just creating wealth for my direct generation. Mm -hmm. Well, hope that God blesses us with wisdom so that we can do exactly. good. Exactly. Right? And good opportunities. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. So um, talking about uh, helping a thousand investors achieve financial freedom with you. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about that. I see when I when I find out about multifamily, I see and I saw and I still I still see today. So that this is a teamwork, as you said, your network is your net worth. So it, this is a team sport. We need a team of people managing the apartment complex. We need a team of people managing the investment and we need the investors to come up with capital so we can get the deal done. So it's three teams together working on something that is going to create generational wealth for everyone involved, hopefully, you know? And yeah. I saw that I could not buy an apartment complex and, and especially a large one, just myself in the bank, you know? Hopefully in the future I can when I have reserves, but it's much better to use other people's money, you know? And, for sure. And, 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 and you just get a cut for basically putting zero in skin in the game, just really your labor, in your time, right? And I, I knew that... For me to be able to scale, I needed to find investors, investors with issues. And then I, I saw, well, am I going to be begging them for money? But then the more I, I trained myself on capital raising, I, I saw that what we're doing really is actually beautiful because we're creating opportunities for people that don't know or don't have the desire to operate or learn about real estate to be able to be, to get a cut on the real estate investment world. So it's amazing if you really think about it, because a doctor, for example, I work with a lot of, of physicians and doctors and lawyers. They already went to school to be a doctor and to be a lawyer. So they don't want to go back to school or learn about real estate on how assets should supposed to be run and how hmm. CapEx and, and, and cap rates and NOI and all of these things. They don't, they don't have the time or desire, right? But then because of us, people like ourselves that knows the ins and outs on, on asset and how the industry should work uh, of an asset should be ran, we provide them opportunities to invest as a passive investor. So all yeah. they have to do is transfer their money, believe on us, believe and trust us. And then in five years and throughout these five years, we will be getting them back cash flow monthly. And at the, at the end of the business plan, they will get a big fat check at the end. Yeah. So it's really beautiful. And, and I really thought, well, this is actually, I am your vehicle for you to retire early, you know, for you, for me to educate you on ways that you, to find money sitting around you, your bank accounts, not doing nothing. And especially in today's market, you know, and invest with me and these opportunities. These are the risks. These are the returns. And I'm the one that I'm going to be managing for you. So all you have to do is click in your bank transfer. <laughs> And wait for my emails monthly with updates and uh, take the risk with me, you know, and, and the way that everyone should invest, investment comes with risks, that's for sure. Like We, we, we can't talk about benefits and, and, and returns without talking about risks, but there are many, many ways that you can mitigate risks. And uh, for the past year, I met all kinds of operators, operators that did did not think about risks as much as I do. And I came with a conclusion of, of a, a nice funnel to, to avoid as much as possible risks. So the, my investments, the minimum that you can get is your money back. You know, like that's the worst case. But my, I would not go in a, in a deal if there is a chance of us losing everything, including, hey, I don't have any money to give you back at the end of five years. You know, so the, yeah, the worst that can sense. happen... Is here's your hundred hundred thousand back. Sorry for wasting five years of your life, but that's not the goal. The goal is always to give at least double. Yeah, and and one of the reasons you're so um, conscious, I think, might be the word um, for not losing other people's money, is because when you like in your flipping career, it was, it was your money, my money, right? Yes, it right? was my money in the bank. You know exactly. That that was my biggest fear. That was my biggest <laughs> fear when I started this because yeah. I was like. This is people money. I have my 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 first deal ever it was a 40 units in Macon, Georgia. And I have my my stepdad all of his retired money there. So I was like, this better be a good deal. So this is actually very scary. I remember when he wired the funds and I was like, this is the whole entire savings account that he has, that he yeah. has saving in. So he's believing me. So I'm like, not only that, but Probably a lot of my investors, that's their money. You know, that's yeah. their life sweat in tear money that they're investing with me to be able to do double it in five years, hopefully three, you know, so it's very scary. So 
Yeah. The same mentality that I had when I was flipping is like if, if things go, hit, shit hits the fan, I'm there underneath the house fi fixing the pipe and YouTubing how to fix pipes. You know, the same <laughs> mentality I have with multifamily. If something comes up, I, you you damn right know that I'm going to be there making, going down with the sheep as well. You know what I Taking mean? Taking care so, of it, for sure. Yes. So and was that how you raised $2 million for your first deal? So the, it was a... Uh, there is a luck factor in there. You know, I believe that I put myself in a situation to be lucky. And that was kind of what I believe happened in there. So the last flip, that one that I'm telling you, it was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy that sold me the, the house saw the struggle because I'm very big on social media. So I'm always documenting my whole life and my, nice. not my just, just my personal life and my, my business as well. And I think my investors relate to that because they can For see sure. the struggle and they can see the realness behind it too. Because a lot of the people, when I was searching for inspiration, everyone make it seem so easy, you know, like, hey, oh, I just call my my my, my family and friends and then I raised two million. I'm like, I don't have family and friends here. So mm -hmm. I have this deal. I have to raise, I think, with three million, the, the raise amount. How, how am I going to do it? You know, so I use social media to help me kind of promote to everyone that I'm not doing flips anymore. I'm doing multifamily because of this, this, this. So if you want, if you, if you can relate to the problem or if you have that problem as well, I'm the girl, you know? And he saw that the, the owner of the house saw that and he's an older man and he's been investing in many kinds of assets and he had a commercial building. So he sold it and he had a 1031, which is basically not to pay gains, capital gains on it. He has to invest it in another one yeah. right mm -hmm. away. He has a, like a certain amount of time. So he saw that I was doing commercial buildings and he's like, hey, Raquel, I saw that you're doing that. And I was so impressed by how you guys turn around, turn that house around. And it, and I saw the struggle and I was so inspired and I trust you guys so much. I have this opportunity of 1031 for $2 million. Do you have anything at the moment? And I was like, I don't, but I will <laughs> find it. Just give me a, some time, you know. And then the opportunity came and a lot has to do with the fact that I, the, 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 my shortcut to being successful per se, or go so fast, you know, compared to other people is because I paid for a mastermind, you know? So I think I, that's something that I'm always recommending to people, whatever they want to do to pay for some kind of mastermind, because then that puts you in a community and a support system around you to create opportunities for you. So then I talk to my mentor and I say, Hey, I have this opportunity. What should I do? Should I continue looking for deals? Or, or or just kind of jump in some other, some other people's deal as a capital raiser. And he had a deal himself. And he's like, I have a deal at 40 Uni in Macon, Georgia, and we need to raise around 3 million. So 2 million would be amazing, you know? And I was like, well, that's perfect. So that's kind of like my luck factor that I paid for a mastermind. And because I promoted my struggle on the internet and, and I kind of got th th this investor's heartstrings and an opportunity, you know? It was all yeah. about being in the right place, Knowing the right people, you know, a combination of a lot of things and hard work as well. You know, let's not that's a great <laughs> take story. it from that. But that's kind of how how it all started. But that was a boom and that was easy. But from then on, it was truly struggle to to yeah. raise because I used all of my resources. <laughs> For sure. So then yeah. how like so like let's see. Can you um make the opportunity that you came across a little bit more clear? Because look, a lot of people have a lot of opportunities in front of them. But they don't know. They like they they don't recognize them, right? So that's a that's a thing, like not yes, not recognizing true. the opportunities. Um. So you had a guy, right? Who can you explain the the the, the like yes. this guy? That, so he with the $2 he sold dollars? me the house. So he okay. sold me a house to flip. Just so it was just a three bedroom single family home to flip. But deep inside, I think what happened was he knew how bad that house was, mm -hmm. and uh, he knew how the pictures looked nice and the exterior looked nice. But he knew the bonds of the property. So he kind of had that karma, kind of like, I put this young couple into such a struggle. So I think it had something to do with it, too. And he was following us because he lived right beside. Yeah. He, he owned and, and, and uh, reside right beside that house. So he saw us every day there. He saw it and then he would pop in and ask, well, so what's going on? And we were like, we're waiting for the carpenters. You know, uh, he needs to finish the siding and he is not here. And then he would see us like a couple of hours just there fixing the siding and, and he would come up and say, I'm so inspired. Can I please help you guys? So we, instead of being angry with him for selling such a bad house for us, because or it was Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
and 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 for instead of us being angry at him we kind of like just kind of like hey this is what happened and we're gonna make it happen you know and yeah. he saw the whole struggle it was six months of basically my husband and i fixing the head the hell out of this three thousand almost three thousand square foot house so it was a huge vintage like historic home it was everything that you you can imagine happened to this house so he saw the struggle because he lived right beside. So every day he saw us there early in the morning, leaving late at night. And then, so, and then winter time comes and we are there the, on the 24th, the, the night before Christmas, you know, fixing something that broke. And then he developed a trust with us. And he's like, yeah. well, I have all the kinds of investments. You guys inspire me so much. You know, you remind me of my, my, my wife and I when we were your age. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep in touch. And I was like, oh, sure. He's a very older man. He's, I think he's like 70 something. And uh, and he kept in touch. You know, he was always asking. And I'm like, yeah. So, sir, we are, we are doing multifamily now. So we buy an apartment complex because he had another house that he wanted to sell. And I you told him, that? no, we're not selling yeah. houses anymore. Uh -huh. We are doing multifamily, which is pretty much commercial. We buy an apartment. He's like, oh, yeah. And then we actually sat down and 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 presented everything to him even before we even thought that he had any money to spend because he was such an older man and, and he could, didn't quite understand the whole multifamily. It was a little too advanced for him, you know? So, and then all of a sudden I got the call, you know, he was like, Hey, Raquel. So I don't know if it's the same thing as what you're doing, but I have $2 million that I need to invest within 45 days and I need to find something similar to what I, uh, because when you, Damn. when you do a 1031, you have to invest in similar. You can, for example, sell a car wash. At, yeah. I don't know exactly the, the regulations. So you might um, find someone, someone else bit. on the internet to, to give you like the limitations on 1031 exchange. But I know that has to be kind of like the same asset class, you know? So he and had a building. A, yeah, exactly. So he had a commercial building. And he needed to find another commercial building. And then this multifamily kind of stayed within the same limitations. So I was like, hey, and then I found, I, I talked to my, my my mentor and he's like, well, I have, I have something. So if he wants to invest, you come in as a partner. So everything kind of happened this way. And then I presented to him. It, it took me a long time to kind of make him understand. And then another thing, another meeting, I had to have his wife in there too, because his, yeah. his wife didn't quite know. And then we had to explain to him that, it's not us that's going to run it. It's a property management and all the components of a, of a big multifamily like this. And it took a, a little while, but because he knew me, it's, the base of it is he knew me and Trust, he yeah. trusted me, you know? So mm -hmm. he's, that, that, that's how it was one paycheck from one. And actually, I don't have that many investors. You know, I have a handful of investors that invest in every single one of my deals, you know? So because I'm not a strong factor. capital. It's just the same factor, you know, they, and the other two ones that I found, they are my deep pocket uh, investors. They found me through Instagram. And if you see my Instagram, it's not much of this traditional cap rates are this, 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 and then all is this, it's you just know, it's you fun. sharing your life, it's your just journey. me as my kids, it's me having fun. And, and it, it's just truly showing the struggle of a simple woman trying to make it into this real estate world together with you you know kind of thing and you know and and they invest every single time every single time that i call them they're like yeah ready they don't even care about presentations anymore before i used to do the whole presentation they're like yeah raquel how much is that a hundred i'm like okay yeah i'm like wow <laughs> i hope to be like this one day <laughs> just wiring a hundred thousands everywhere yeah yeah <laughs> well great story so um Hello, Modern Kings and Queens. At my company, Millionaire Network Automation, we believe in the power of networking. We believe that in real estate, your net worth is your network. This is why we help real estate investors raise capital by connecting them with their ideal investors and helping them build a massive network of their ideal investors in less than 30 days and with only four hours of work per week. If you're interested in this, click the link below in the description of this podcast to learn how you can propel your growth with a reliable system that will consistently help you connect with your ideal investors, build trust, add value, get your investors to promote you and put you in front of more of their investor friends and raise more capital faster and in a much more effortless way so that you can achieve your financial freedom and still have the time and the energy to pour into every single other area of your life. So go watch the training and you're going to have the opportunity to book a call to talk about how you can get this 100% done for you system implemented in the next five days. 
So thank you for watching and I'll see you later and enjoy the rest of the, this episode. Bye-bye. A lot of amazing lessons from that story that we could yes. go into and spend the hours talking about, but <laughs> I just want to distill that down to like one, right? I, you didn't ask at the beginning, right? Like, hey, how are you? But normally when people ask me, I say, with a positive attitude, doing things right with no fear and grateful, right? And yeah, um, right? so you, you had a positive attitude about that horrible house within horrible conditions, right? Internally, right? Yes. You had a positive attitude about it. You did things right. You didn't blame. You didn't shame. You didn't yep. uh, criticize, right? The, 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 the person who Every who sold day it we you. had the, sound, the, the music bl blasting, you know, and the house all disaster and we're paying uh, holding costs on it. But we were like, let's do it one wall at a time. Yeah. So that, you had a positive attitude. Yeah. You did things right. You had nothing to be fearful. Well, man, maybe you had things to be fearful for, but you, you know, you, you, it was wasn't down. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and as a result, you got a lot of things to be grateful for. Exactly. Right. A lot of things came out of it yeah. because we could, we could have a very nasty attitude towards that guy. Cause it's like, uh -huh. Hey, old man, why did you sell me yeah. such a bad, how, how didn't you, why didn't you tell us all of this? <laughs> why didn't you yeah. cut 30,000 of your purchase price, your offering price? Because you knew how bad it, the house was, but we were like, there's no point, you know, like let's make the best of it. Yeah. So, um, and then the, those traits, right? Respect, humility, wisdom. Um, by using those traits, you were able to turn a bad situation into having a guy give you $2 million for you to become a, a GP on a deal. That's crazy. And open the doors for me. And, and that, yeah. that literally opened the doors for me, you know? And, and not only that, but it, it was able to inspire other investors like him, like him you know? To trust me the same way, you know, like because of that. What if I had a bad attitude towards him? What if I treated him badly? What if I didn't take the time and went for coffee with this old man and his wife to to uh, to present or to educate what I just learned, you know? So you always have to kind of give people chances because you never know. And again, this is a relationship based business, you know. Mm -hmm. So you need people, you and you never know. I am like that with everyone. It's like that's kind of like my tip to everyone. Is like if you want to start. Start connecting with people because the easiest, uh, the easiest, you mean what I, you know what I mean by easiest, but the most common way for you to become a real estate investor as an active GP, general partner in a, in a deal, like a multifamily is if you can raise capital and any class that you can take about raising capital, they say, start with your family and friends, meaning your, your, your inner circle, yeah. people directly involved with what you're doing and know who you are. And know and trust. At least you have two, right? Know and trust. So it's start educating people like that. I'm, I'm, I'm start, I start studying about multifamily. And this is great because you can go in, raise the rents, and then the value of the property doubles. And then I hold your money for two years. And then I give up uh, for X amount of years. And then I give you back the double of it. It has a lot of tax benefit. You, you start kind of pitching the, the deal to them. And you start getting them interested, but maybe they don't have the money. And then you say, hey, there are ways that you can get money from your equity in your home or from your retirement account or from IRA or from your kids account, you know. So you, you start kind of educating everyone around you because then if anywhere they are and that conversation comes up, they will remember you. Like, yeah, yeah, my, my friend, my neighbor, she's doing that. I can connect you with that. So you have to kind of promote that that's what you're doing everywhere. And some kind of a way you will come up in a conversation because I'm sure when he thought, well, I have a 1031 exchange and I have to find it. Who do I know that does this now? And if I didn't have the time and tell him about it, he wouldn't know that I was doing this. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a promoter of your business for sure. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've <laughs> you know, I've, I've really enjoyed this conversation. So uh, talking about promotion, do you have any, mm -hmm. any multifamily deals going on right now in Texas? Yes, we do. We have a, uh, a pretty big, not in Texas, actually. We have uh, one in Oklahoma that we are raising, and we have another one in Mississippi. And they are big, big with big operators. Right now, I'm being very picky with the operators. That's something that I can tell you. It was a, a, a kind of a mistake and a lesson pretty much early on to pick and choose your partners really carefully because it's pretty much a marriage that you're going to be. And yeah. because you work out with a raiser, you are not necessarily in the front line of the deal, you know? So you've got to be lying. Yeah. Yes, operating. So you, you have to make sure that you choose the right operators because if not, 
your reputation will go down with them, you know? So yeah. it's very important. And these two deals that I have at the moment, they are very, very good, great returns. Something that I'm, because what I'm doing at the moment as well is trying to find deals that I can operate as well because mm -hmm. my investors, they want me to, to have, to be more of an active GP and uh, I can't find it because of my lack of experience, you know, and my lack of track record as an operator. So the easiest way for you to, to cut that is being a capital raiser again, you know. So if you want to start in this field, a capital raiser is your way to go and partner with strong operators. So we have two deals at the moment that we're currently raising and they are great returns. They are all two minimum um, X, meaning multiple. If you invest 100,000, you will get 200,000 at the end of probably three years. One of them is projected to be three years. The other one is five years. I have a, a couple of other projects to diversify from multifamily, a little coming up in the future, which is uh, storage units and uh, uh, master plan communities. Is we're buying the land and we're building all sorts of, of like some multifamily, some townhomes. So new construction is good here in Texas as well. So I'm always, always looking for deals, always looking to connect with people, you know, for people that wants to work together. First thing would be to jump on a call. And I like to develop a relationship first before we go straight into business, you know, because they need to have the same. All of our desires need to be aligned. You know, that's yeah. something that I take a lot of pride on, on people that I work with is let's get together on a call. Let's see what I can offer you. What are your pain points? What exactly you need that money for? And then you just get in my email list and we start looking for deals that fits what you need. And I want to do some deals with you, Alex, too. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know how to say this in, in English, but um, so um, Raquel, so let, let's let's dive right into um this 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 small section of every single podcast that I do that I've been doing called the Ruther Investor Obstacle Deep Dive, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's meant so that we can talk about common obstacles that real estate investors face on a, on a daily basis. And we talk about them to give them, give the listeners the tools, the mindset, and the skill sets for them to be able to navigate those obstacles a lot better. Nice. So, since you are into like capital racing, um, and that's like your specialty right now, uh, mm -hmm. up to this point, what do you think is the main, well, one of the main obstacles or problems or struggles with racing capital? Limited, limited beliefs. I think for someone like brand new, you mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. someone brand new is limited beliefs and our mind sometimes play tricks on us and create problems that you think that they are a factor and a reason why not. I think everything should start. And that's the base of when I started this whole journey was working on my mindset and as silly and as vague as it sounds that it plays a such an important part on everything. Because if you really think about it, look at me and my situation when I started. I took the last money that I had in my bank account because we were in between that flip, you know? So mm -hmm. I was like, let me leave some money here if, if shit hit, hits the fan and I need <laughs> to pay out of pocket, you know? Yeah. But I took the rest of it and I invested on a mastermind, right? So I had zero money. So, and and then I, I came across uh, the first obstacle, finding money, because I was like, okay, so then pretty much I can do it with hard money lender, thinking the same way I used to think of flipping houses. So I thought, well, it's going to be the bank can give you the money to purchase a, a apartment complex. But then I was like, oh, the bank is going to give me, but I still have to raise millions, you know? Yeah. And I was like, and then and then my course and in, in every course that I did about capital raising, they say about family and friends. I'm like, shit, I'm 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 asked. I don't have any. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's it. I don't have family and friends. My 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 family in Brazil is not going to send Brazilian money, which is five times less to to, you know, like I don't even know how they're going to send it. And tax related and, and LLC. I'm like, I don't <laughs> know. I'm like, that's it. First barrier. Damn. I spent all this money in this. Now, what am I going to do? You know, and I could have just have that destroy my path. And I'm like, okay, so then what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to flipping to pay for this mastermind that I just play, you know, but I didn't, you know, I'm like, okay, how can I manage this? How can I use what I have at the moment? Because I didn't have money because there are other ways that you can do it. You can take another seven thousand class dollars class to raise capital to learn how to raise capital, or you can pay for this three thousand dollars 
list of investors that you can cold call and try to get people don't have that money anymore. So for sure, it comes back to limited beliefs. Just don't have limitations in your belief of your power and don't let any obstacle be in you in the way of you and your success for sure. So then I I was faced with the first problem. I don't have family and friends, you know. I don't have my neighbors, maybe, but I had to start with zero. If it wasn't for that investor, and it wasn't for it, after that investor, I had no one, you know. Yeah. So I started. What I did was starting using. Think about a solution, you know. So you have your moment of panic <laughs> when you encounter a problem, but you have to think about a solution, and you have to. There is a saying in Brazil that is like, when you want something, you find a solution. And when you don't want, you find an excuse, you know? Yeah. So it's pretty much it. I could have just take that and just, eh, that's it. I can't do it, you know? But I was like, okay, so marketing. What can I use in my power that is free at the moment that I can reach people anywhere in the U.S. or in the world and Social let them media. know of what I'm doing? Social media, you know what I mean? I used to do that in, in my, 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 my business before. You know, I used to own a small business, uh, beauty academy. And I used the heck out of social media. It was free. It was a, a powerful tool. I know how to use it. I know how the algorithm works. And that's what I used to create my list of LPs, my limited partners, you know? So I found a solution right away. So the biggest struggle was to find people and it still is because right now they're being very picky. And I wish that I had unlimited, like a long list of a thousand investors everyone with a million dollars to invest, you know, and I don't, I, they are becoming very picky and they have very specific deals that they want and locations and all. So I'm not, I, I don't consider myself being a strong capital raiser, which is still a struggle finding new LPs. So what I do is network, being here, talking to people, not only to inspire people, but as well as promote what I do and hope to connect with people and being a lot of, of meetups and posting on social media all the time. And truly just trying to solve people's problems. So that's that was my biggest struggle. And still today, finding new LPs, people with money, and educating them about how they can use their money to invest with me. Nice. Well, <clears throat> Raquel, I'm having so much fun that I lost, I literally lost track of time, right? I we are, you know, we're going over, so I apologize if I'm like it's okay. I'm messing anything up. Um since you're on a journey of like self-discovery and limiting beliefs and and, and then just like sh growing your mindset, mm -hmm. let me give you one tip. All right. So and, and then anyone listening, of course, yoga. Yoga is like crazy oh, for limiting yeah. beliefs. Oh yeah, meditation, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like meditation, you sit to meditate, right? But yoga is like an active meditation. Uh, and the thing is that your body is the door to your subconscious mind, right? Like your body oh. is is your subconscious mind. Right, because everything you do, 95% of your behavior is unconscious, right? Yes, so it comes from your yeah. subconscious mind. And yeah. the be and, and 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 what what do you do that behavior with? With your body, right? So your body yeah. is literally your subconscious mind. Um, like your feelings, your body, like if someone touches you here and you have some limited belief, and this is the trigger, right? Like the feelings that you feel, the feelings mm -hmm. are felt with your body. So your body is the door to your subconscious mind. And when you do yoga. You get your mind and your body really connected. Connected. Wow, um, that's awesome. One of the things that it does is that it get it, it gets you really calm. So nothing yeah. triggers you. So for example, if you go to your back to your family in Brazil, right, you're probably going to get triggered a lot. You and you're going mm -hmm. to get all of these feelings, and you're gonna be like, like, why do I feel like that, right? Um, well, when you do yoga, you're not so reactive, right? Oh, you don't, I you don't see. get triggered. You see, like the things happening, they hit you. And then all the feelings and thoughts are like, oh, and a barrier. Yeah. My, my mind is thinking this, and my body is feeling this. like I'm, it's not oh, me; it's my body nice. and my mind, right? So that's one thing that it happens. It, it makes you less reactive. Um, and then the other thing is that you're able to like separate yourself from your thoughts and your and your feelings, right? And then question them, right? So it's really cool. So, cool. so yeah, yoga. Yeah, I would right? try that, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, Raquel, it's been a pleasure. I've had lots of fun today in this, on this episode, talking with you, getting to learn from you, getting to meet you. Um, anyone who might be interested, right? Who might want to get to know you better? They maybe they they uh they they resonated with you uh, at a, at a certain level. Maybe they are from another country as well. Maybe they're women. Maybe they are. You you inspired them in some way. 
or they might be interested in, in, in investing with you, right? And in, in you showing them how is it that, that they can use their savings and money that they may have to grow their wealth. Um, so Raquel, where would be the best place for people to connect with you if they want to know more about you? I for sure my Instagram is the easiest, you know, it's rad, R-A-D as in December, underscore investors. You mm -hmm. know, that that I'm always there. There's links to my website there. There's links to Calendly as well that we can book mm -hmm. a time. I love to talk to people, even if they're not uh, an investor, you just want to some tips on how to get started in this world and 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 just to connect. You know, I'm, yeah. I always have time available for everyone. So it's the easiest way to find me is through rad as in radical <laughs> inve underscore investors on my Instagram. And uh, let's talk. Let's let's do some business together. I'll put your Facebook, your Instagram, your website, and everything, awesome. uh, all of those you. links wherever this appears. Um, Raquel, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank and, you, um, Alex, for, for having me. It's, it, it's so important what you do and what you're doing to the world, you know, promoting this kind of vehicle of financial wealth. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Raquel, and I'll see you <laughs> thank later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. We want you to know that we love and appreciate you. And we are super grateful about being part of your journey of becoming a successful real estate entrepreneur and having it all. Please share this episode with a friend who you think will be impacted positively. Send it to someone who you know is interested in real estate and dreams of having it all and being the best they can be across all areas. And if you thought this episode was really valuable, share it on your social media as a post or a story. We have a special gift for all of those who contribute to the modern kings and queens movement. So for those of you who decided to share this episode and help us spread our message, send me a message letting me know on any social media platform at Alex Ramirez, the modern king. I have a special surprise for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.